Hi, I'm Kevin De La Serna, and I'm going to be teaching Professional Development Seminar 2. We're going to focus on writing a media industry text-based resume. It's all about the content and what you actually write in your resume. We're not going to focus on the visual side of what you create. It's going to be about the written content and make sure that your keywords and content are aligned with the type of job that you want to pursue. You're going to do that with five major sections. First, you need a header, and that's going to be your contact information and a place to showcase your work or a portfolio site. Second, you need to have industry projects, a place to show that you have some kind of experience in the field. Now, it can be academic based, but if you have professional experience working in the field, we will use that. You also need a skills section, and we want these skills to be hard technical skills that are media related. The Adobe Creative Suite is a great place to start. If there are specific skills in that area, add those. If there is color correction, photo editing, photo manipulation, think along the lines of those technical skills that you have. Of course, you need to have your education, so make sure media communications is listed first under education. Additionally, if you have professional experience or are currently working in a job, but it's not related to the industry, we're gonna put that at the bottom of your resume and it's gonna be called work history. And I'll show you how to do that. So let's jump into a resume builder and get going. Now, if you already have a resume, go ahead and use your existing document. And if you wanna build your resume from scratch, go ahead and select the program that you'd like to use and start creating your resume. Now, if not, the first thing you need to do is select a resume template. You can use Google Docs, you can use Microsoft Word, Pages, and there's a number of other outside resources that I'll provide in FSO. I'm gonna use Google Docs because it was quick, easy to access. First, we have to select a template. So click New, Google Doc, and then go to the arrow and select From a Template. When that opens up, we are going to look for resumes. I like this two column resume here, Resume Serif. So when I click on that, it's going to show me this. And I'll show you why I like this resume resume format. The name is bold, easy to read. I can put my contact information there, add a headline. The experience is listed first and I can easily substitute that for industry projects. On the right side, we can add skills and drop a line of all those skills that we've gained throughout media communications. And if I wanted to, I can remove awards and continue to build this out. For education, it's right underneath my experience. You'll see the format is easy to read and underneath education, you have a list of projects. We can change those titles as we need to. And of course, languages, if you're bilingual, you can keep that, but if you only speak one language, it's not necessary. The first section we'll update is your header. So let's go ahead and change out the name. And underneath that, you'll see a headline. So to update this headline, I actually selected three common pathways for media communications grads. They're either designers, video producers, or video editors, or just generalized content creators, people that wanna work in marketing or have a variety of different skills. This third line is the designed for someone who wants to do a little bit of everything. The first two are those titles or those pathways that are more what we call specialists and they wanna do that particular job every single day. So pick which is most ideal for what you want to do every single day and then just use three, maybe four to fit this headline. For this resume, I'm gonna go with a content creator, social media manager, and that's how we'll populate the rest of our content. Now, you wanna update your email address and make sure this is professional without any alphanumeric numbers, nothing that's offensive, or you know more of the personalized information. Avoid birth dates, because that's a tell of how old you are. This template doesn't have a place for your website, but simply you can write that in here. Don't bother putting in www. You can hyperlink this info. Only use one phone number to simplify the communication path. Now let's update the experience section. If you have professional media-based experience, keep it in this section. If you don't, you can default to your academic projects or any media-based industry projects that you want to showcase. Now remember, the job titles here need to reflect the job description that you want to apply for. Now they lead off with company, so you actually won't have a company, so we can swap this information around. You can put your job title here. Case. So let's go ahead and start to populate this section with our top three to four projects that we want to use. All right, now we have four academic projects that you have created in media communications. We use the graphic design Freshly Farms branding project, the web design Real Deal Tacos, 
the Video Producer Project, a self-portrait in audio and video production, as well as a content creator role for the Leaf Institute and New Media Tools. We went ahead and used actionable verbs to showcase the skill that we used as well as the asset that was created. So for this position, content designer, we created eight media assets sketches, logo design, business card, magazine advertisement, two merchandise mock-ups, and a design presentation. For web designer, we designed a six-page website and created all digital copy for Real Dale Tacos. In the video producer role, we produced a 60-second video portrait using Adobe Premiere and Audition, and then content creator follows suit. Now, these may not be the exact thing that you did, but it's somewhere close to the skills that you used in all four of these courses. Now, if you wanna showcase your research skills, you did take a research course, so that could be a marketing analysis or marketing analyst position that you could include here. And then you would provide the content and the data that you collected through your research. Now let's get moving on to the skills section. Okay, so I called an audible on the skills section. I modified the first section to be technical skills, which included the Adobe Creative Cloud programs and then some of the skills I use within those programs. The bottom half, I changed awards and languages to media skills. And this was all the social media, social media management skills that I have. Be sure to update this section with keywords that are relevant and aligned with the job that you are looking to pursue and the job description is going to tell you what keywords and what's important. We are down to our last two sections and now it's education. So we'll update the school name. Make sure you add Bachelor of Science Media Communications and spell it out here. Now, as you see, it kind of folds over to the next line. Let's go ahead and just tab that down. If we do a shift enter, it'll keep it right there tight. Now you still see there's some placeholder text. If you wanted to, you could add the names of courses that are relevant. And you'll see that I populated this section with courses or principles. For example, you'll see digital storytelling, creative presentations, research methodologies. So they're not the exact name of the course, but they are relevant. There is a second section for education. And if you don't have a second degree that's actually completed or a certification, let's just delete it. So you can leave this with just your associate or bachelor's level program. Let's get on into the project section. Since we already put those up top, this would be our work history. Any job that you've had, and it doesn't have to be related to the industry, but you don't have to actually add information about the job, job titles, company name, and dates. And that's all we need to add. It's just about the amount of time that you've held it. So if it's six months or more, go ahead and add it. So a quick trick, once you get one line set up, go ahead and copy and paste it for all the additional lines, and then you can modify it for each job that you want to add. In this case, I'll do no more than four. Just wanted to try to balance out this page if possible. All right, we have our work history populated. We have a target customer service rep position. In this case, if you've worked in the electronics department, it's applicable to working in the world of media. If you sold iPads, phones, cameras, public stock clerk, 2017 to 2018, you can even add volunteer work in here. And what you may notice is that you got another text box down here and you have a second blank page. All we have to do is find that little text box. We're gonna right click it and delete it. Now remember, this is a general media community communications content creator resume. If you specialize in a particular area, then focus on your projects that are related to that particular area. So again, the job description will determine how you populate your resume. For a last thing that we wanna do to clean this up, we're gonna make sure we title this correctly. Always title your resume by your name and say content creator resume. Put in a date. I'm not a huge fan of the, the serif font in itself. All we have to do is do a select all and we're going to go to the font an aerial font or some of these clear fonts they're easier to read um, especially at a quick glance so you'll notice that has been updated other format updates you can make would be within headers for example industry projects is only at a nine point font and we want that to really stand out so let's move that up to 12 we can do that for all of our headers and it will be easier to see as employers will really be scanning through your resume quickly looking for specific information now remember you don't have to use a resume template. If you want to create your own, you certainly can. Just make sure it's consistent, easy to read, the fonts are clean, and that you include these five required sections. Now you have a media-focused text-based resume that you're ready to use. So that's how you write a media-focused 
text-based resume. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.